Plugin of the week is the even tied T verb, T for uh, Tony Visconti, and uh, or TV for Tony Visconti. Uh, this is a uh, reverb uh, that is a combo uh, platter of the of Tony Visconti, famous producer engineer, uh, most known for his work with David Bowie, also worked with T Rex. I actually worked with uh, um, Tony Visconti on a project uh, many years ago at Electric Lady Studios. A real genius, brilliant guy, uh, someone who is sort of um, a renaissance man, if you will, always uh, uh, very smart, always thinking intelligently about um, uh, everything that he does. Very mindful uh, person, very smart person. Uh, we used to do uh, New York Times crossword puzzles together in studio, and uh, he kicked my butt all the time. So really smart guy. Uh, anyway, uh, beyond uh, uh, a little adulation there of Tony... Um, it, there's a particular technique that goes back um, to the Heroes sessions, uh, going back to 1977, and he uh, created this particular technique. He had a single track for it, and he wanted to create this special effect um, for uh, David's vocal. And so he staged these microphones at different distances where um, David would sing into the direct mic, which is represented here in the front, and then there would be two distant mics uh, that had gates on them, and so they would be triggered based on how loud David was singing. So if he sang with a medium voice, the medium distant one would open, and uh, if he sang very loudly, then the distant mic would open. And uh, the idea would be that as the voice got bigger and louder, the space would get bigger and louder. A really brilliant idea, you know, and, and a very unique thing, and so he created this unique sound. Now, um, it's hard to necessarily create a plugin just for a particular effect that was used on a particular record. Um, and being as iconic as it is, you obviously need a plugin that does a lot more than that. And this is really an amazing plugin. And although it has all of that functionality and that design, we'll kind of go through it step by step so I can kind of show you a bit of what's going on. Now, the original space um, was in a studio, Studio 2 in Ton Studio, uh, that was in Berlin. And uh, it was originally a concert hall designed in 1910. Most of the work that was done here is an or or orchestral work, uh, as you can see, the big open space there and uh, in the graphic. So uh, for that, it's not a typical recording space for rock records, although it can be used for that. And in this case, it works out to be a really special effect. So essentially with a plug-in, there are three instantiations because the original setup was mono, but in this case, you can actually have mono in, mono out, mono in, stereo out, or stereo in, stereo out. So it gives you those different options depending upon your configurations and your DAW. And what you get are three mics. There's one that's always fixed. And the mic in, in the beginning here uh, actually has three polar patterns. So this one is fixed. You can't move the positioning of it, but the other two you can move around. So you have omni, cardioid, or figure eight pattern uh, with high pass and low pass filters. So the uh, um, low cut filter is uh, at 150 hertz and the high cut at eight kilohertz. So that, uh, and I'll show you how this can kind of be important. Now, this is giving you a direct signal. So this would be if your David was here, who would be singing on this microphone. And the other microphones, you can sort of move around. It gives you positions or distances away and sort of a pan position. With 50 being far right, you can actually go in and double click on those numbers and type in specific numbers. Um, you know, based on, you know, where you want to do it, or you can actually just kind of move them around on your own. Now, what's interesting is each of these microphones, uh, and this is a stereo in, stereo out instantiation, each microphone is stereo. So if I put it in the center, that doesn't mean that it's coming back as a mono reverb. So if I double click on the mic here, the, uh, the two mics, the, uh, room mics here, I can get and place them into particular positions. There are gates for those two mics, a compressor for the front mic, and uh, there are no um, polar pattern uh, selections for the distant room mics, but they will appear in stereo. And then we have um, a mixer here, which is um, modeled after uh, the Neve console at that particular studio and the way it was used. So you can see this graphic EQ here, um, or not a graphic EQ, this EQ here, which has very much that Neve look um, uh, from, that, from the 1970s. 
And um, here with this, this is interesting because this is sort of a room tonal coloration more than it is an equalization of the reverb. So those are two different things. Uh, it will shape the tonality of the reverb as opposed to EQing the reverb. And those are two different things. Probably the closest you can come to that uh, characteristic or idea is um, where you're controlling um, the reverb times at different frequency, often called like damping. Um, and and so this will give you some of that characteristic. And, you know, and essentially you got a high and low frequency um, a diffusion control, so it allows you to control the density of the reverb and you can control the decay time. So essentially what you're doing by moving around the microphones is you're capturing different characteristics and there are all kinds of shortcuts. You can mix them in at different uh, uh, settings here. Um, in this particular case, I'm actually going to feed drums into it. So it's sort of an unusual um, thing where it was set up and the originally purposed for uh, vocals. And I'm sure there will be many demos that will be out there that will show it and demonstrate it in vocals, probably already on the Eventide website. I'm going to do something a little bit different so I can show you how uh, we can kind of play with this. Now, um, as far as the uh, settings on this go, the compressor works as, as, you know, like normal settings, as you would see here. The gates, again, work with normal settings. You can um, link them here. Um, and, uh, you know, so you got that basic control. You have mix controls. Now, these are stereo returns. You notice this is a balance control. So if we wanted to, we could move these two microphones side to side and shift the balance controls, and it would sum those controls. Uh, you can mute or solo any of the tracks. You can also phase invert them. There's one thing here, and I haven't experimented with it, where you could put the two microphones in the exact same position, phase invert them, and then uh, gate them. And when the gate closes, the reverb appears. It has this sort of opposite effect, and you can kind of play with that on one of them, where the gate closes on one of them, not on both. And then all of a sudden you would hear reverb, so you would have this inverse effect. But you can kind of play around with some really, really cool ideas. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to zoom out here for a second because I'm going to go to a particular point in the song here where uh, the drums play a little bit more of a halftime feel, and this will allow you to kind of hear what's going on. So uh, I'll probably bring up the... So just give you, this is all the reverb. So this is just as is. So this is actually giving you a direct sound. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to uh, just make sure here. So what I'm going to do here on this is actually I'm going to mute the, uh, the dry sound. Um, so now we're just hearing the reverb return just to show you that this indeed is the direct signal. Um, what we can do with this is you can squash the crap out of it if you wanted to, and it'll give you this pretty heavy sound. But just to show you one quick thing here, if I select, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mix the volume up here. So this would be the equivalent of it being like the direct sound right in front of the microphone. Let's notice the difference here between the Omni mic. Much more of like an immediate room sound much more direct and now the figure eight is interesting because it's uh, one side facing you and the other picking up right behind as opposed to a side position which would kind of cancel out the direct signal so I kind of like that that feel of that here and then if I wanted to I could do um, a little bit of something here where oh, Helps if I put it in. There we go. So what I can do here now is kind of it, with the Omni setting here, kind of get a, a little bit of a um, a little bit of angst energy that I can and mix in there. So now if I go back to the uh, raw drums, I think I select. Like a... 
right? Gives me like a nice little uh, aggressive close up kind of miking configuration thing there. So I'm gonna mute that for a second and let's go on to open up the, um, the other two microphones just to kind of show you what they're about. Now I can move this around to different positions What you'll hear is, as you move it over to here, you'll hear more early reflections coming off that wall, which will start to shift the angle of the drums a little bit to that side against the normal stereo panning. And a similar thing to the right side. And obviously you get the full um, effect of the distance. Now, on any given point in here, if you, um, well, depending upon, uh, if you have a, a Mac, you're going to hold the control key, or command key, excuse me, um, and if you shift it around, it'll give you more of a fine-tune um, working. Also, if you um, right-click and you drag left, right, or, or front, back, it'll stay locked into that distance position and allow you to kind of slide back and forth in that way. So there's some shortcuts that allow you to kind of work around some things. If you have a mixer set up, you can also shift click and solo um, a microphone, a given microphone, and it will bypass or ignore whatever settings are on the console itself. And that will allow you also to kind of position some things um, around differently. So this gives me the ability to kind of work with this. And then I can also take this out, move in to the final one. So this is way off in the distance here. So one possible thing is here that as I mix these two in together, if the decay is too much, I can bring it back here. And then uh, you're going to you're getting a, gonna get a little bit of a slap here. I'm going to move these guys a little bit up closer here um, because of the pre-delay. Um, there are ways you could deal with that after the fact. Put a, a little fast attack compressor on the output of the reverb um, with a sort of quickish release, and that'll kind of smooth out that echo of that... One other option here, uh, a sort of if you want to go uh, maybe power station style, we can actually go and link these guys together. Maybe I'll make a faster attack here. And normally it'd be... All right, so while I butcher this, it's probably a little bit better if I had like kick and snare only going in there in terms of it uh, being able to trigger and control properly, but just kind of going for a gated uh, reverb type of thing. Uh, you can you can kind of work it from uh, from that angle and then do it separately so you could have the gates turn on independently based on how loud individual hits come in. Um, but uh, okay, so aside from butchering that, I'll, I'll kind of move away from that so I don't uh, torture you any longer on that side of things.
and then we can increase the density here. This is a trim on the high frequency. Allowing you to tame some of the high frequency energy of the reverb. And this is a gain or trim here, so that's zero right there. Be careful to note that so when you first look at it, it looks like it is a, uh, a, a boost, but um, it's not. It's a zero starting point. Allow you to balance the amount of kick energy or lessen it. And again, kind of balance these things in and out. There's also some cool configurations here where you can set something. So let's just see, what's our distance here? 17 feet. 17 feet and uh, I think it was around 34.7 or something like that. So if I, uh, if I, um, uh, let's see, uh, so I got, now I can take these guys and if I want a wider reverb. Now I have real independent control over the two. Phase invert the reverbs. Mix in a little bit of that center strength. And you see how, like, um, the quality of the reverb, you know, and the control over it is really pretty amazing. Um, it's a great sounding um, space, and there's a lot of flexibility in terms of getting different tonal characters by shaping the room, moving around to different areas in the room. Uh, the compression uh, sounds really killer there on that. Sounds a bit like a VCA limiter that's on there. Um, and then, um, you know, just the, the, uh, mixer controls down here and the ability to kind of balance it out. You can do like more of a sort of spaced pair type of thing. If you want a wider thing or go to a more mono centered reverb and kind of move these guys around at different distances so you can blend in different things. Um, it creates a lot of flexibility and, uh, and, uh, sometimes with these types of room things, you're limited in terms of how you can move and where you can move around microphones and all of those sort of, or the configurations. And with this, you have quite a lot of control. So you could see just by me playing around that there's a lot of possibility in on this one and, uh, a really cool one. I, I really dig this. Uh, I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, picking this one up and uh, playing around with it for a little bit. Sorry I butchered the gate thing there, but I think you get the basic idea. You know what a gate is and uh, how to work it. And uh, next example, I'll do a little better job on that. So uh, that is the plugin of the week. Really good one. Uh, Eventide uh, T-Verb, Tony Visconti's uh, collaboration with Eventide. Uh, a great plugin and uh, really cool for uh, more than just vocals. Uh, in this example, drums and uh, probably on a lot of other things if you put your mind to it.